Good morning. Good morning. I was waiting for the little live button to go on. Hi, I'm Leslie with the Plaid Poodle. Um, welcome to my Monday mini class. Um, I come on Mondays, um, every Monday at 10 a.m. and do a, a, a quick live stream and just share a simple project with you. Um, I try to stick to a theme every month and um, the April theme, since it is April 1, happy April Fool's Day. I haven't come up with any pranks yet, <laughs> but um, I'm not really a prankster. So we'll see what happens by the end of the day if I can come up with a trick or two for somebody in my life. If you're planning a prank today, please share it. I need ideas because like I said, I am not... Um, not really good at um, coming up with those kinds of things. I think I'm too nice, right? <laughs> um, if you're here, say hello. I hope I'm in the right spot. I think I am. And it looks like I have my comments turned on. Um, so today we're going to make a, um, a fun fold card. It's called an angled card. Um, I'm not sure what the official name of it is, but I've seen several around the interwebs, um, and I thought it would be kind of fun. I'm going to share some of our new in-color products, and um, some of the new in-color colors. Um, but first I wanted to talk about, let me turn the camera around. There we go. Um, our annual catalog and our mini catalog are all retiring. I'm going to shake the camera stand here. Um, at the end of April. So these two catalogs will be going away. Um, all the pro not all the products will be going away, but the, the catalogs themselves are going to be retiring. So Stampin' Up! has put out a last chance products list and I wish it was a little easier to read. I shared the links to these lists on my Facebook page but I will go ahead and put the um, links in the description when I'm done here. There is a one page. I tried to make it as simple as possible. There's so many things on the list <laughs> that if I make the font too big it would be 20 pages long. Um, so get your ruler out. That's what I do. Let's see. Let me pull a ruler. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good morning. Um, get your ruler out and just kind of go down the list if you're interested. If there's a discounted price, which will begin on um, April 4th, I believe, is when um, this last chance sale starts. I just wanted to give you a heads up. If there's a discounted price, it's over in this column, and you'll see several things. There was something I noticed was 60% off on this list when I was glancing through it. Um, everything marked, I, I went ahead and redid the list, and everything marked in blue are Stampin' Reward stamp sets, so your, your order would have to be $150 or more to order one of those. If it's marked in green, that's a bundle price, and it means that the bundle price is retiring, but not necessarily the products in the bundle. Um, you know, if you order a bundle, a current bundle, you save 10%. So a, a stamp and a punch set, or a stamp and a die set, um, that 10% savings is going away if it's if it's highlighted in green when you look at my list that I again I will put the links in the description and then if it's in um, yellow um, actually I just got that wrong do, do, do. bundle includes some products that are not retiring so if it's in green um, I was really disappointed because one of the stamp sets is going forward, but the dies are not. Um, I had a customer who was interested in that. I think it was the thoughtful, thoughtful something. <laughs> so that was disappointing because the dies are so fun. If it's in yellow, it means the bundles are not retiring. Um, 
they just will no longer be in that bundle price after April 30th. So that's all of that. Um, on April 4th, when this all goes live on my website, you can go to uh, leslie.stampinup.net and hit the shop now. It will, um, there'll be a, just a direct link to all of the things. If there is something that you really, really want, um, I would suggest you go ahead and get it before that sale starts. Especially, and I didn't check the inventory list this morning, especially the retiring in colors, ink pads, ink refills, markers, and Stampin' Blends. Um, those go really fast. So, um, so that's that's that. I did want to mention that. I didn't talk about that last week. Um, it is some tiny print. <laughs> I hate it. Um, I tried to make it as, you know, like I said, if I made it bigger, it would be 20 pages long. So print it out and get your ruler and go through that. <laughs> Um, or just wait for the new catalog to come out. And um, what did I do with the catalogs? Um, good grief, I just had them. I was going to show you the new one. The new catalog. Oh my heavens. <laughs> did I throw them on the floor? Yep. I just throw stuff around here. Okay, the new catalog's coming out. Just wait for that. <laughs> and um, buy some of the new stuff. Um, the new in colors are wonderful and we're going to be using them today for the project. So let us get started. Kim made some of those purchases since she knew the bundle price would save you money. Absolutely. And thank you for your order, Kim. Um, Kim is getting ready to join Stampin' Up! So we're excited to have her um, in, in, um, in our uh, society, whatever we are. <laughs> of Stampin' People. Oh, one more announcement. I have my cards ready for my card class this month, which is a week from this coming Thursday. Um, I kind of went with an April showers theme. I don't know. I wanted something springy. So we're going to make three cards during that class and a little gift card holder. One of my customers said, I would love to make that in class, so I hope she's able to come. Um, we're gonna make this little scalloped edge gift card holder. It's kind of a birthday theme. All the cards are birthdays. Of course, at my classes, you can always choose a different um, sentiment to stamp on your cards. They are fun folds. I don't know if you can kind of see that. This one, you can't, <laughs> but this one is kind of a fun fold. I thought it was really cute. Um, I'm using some retired celebration paper on that one. This one is just a regular card. And if you'll notice that we've got a lot of clouds. I just was thinking of April showers. And then here's a fun fold um, as well. So we'll make those three cards plus... Um, the gift card holder and that's $15 for the class sign up is already over on my blog if you go to the plaidpoodle.com and click on uh, classes and events it'll be there um, and then I'll put a link in the description to to take you there if you're in in the area we would love to have you join us uh, registration deadline for that is April 8th so I have time to cut everything and get your kits ready. Okay, we are going to use some of the new in colors. Here is the card stock. Um, and I thought, I'm always drawn to the pink, but I think we'll do this purple. I have to remind myself what the, these colors are, y'all. I need to. Petunia Pop. So we've got um, the pink is pretty in pink. The peach, which re reminds me of our old mango melody, is um, peach pie. 
The blue, which reminds me of our old um, Bermuda Bay, is Summer Splash. We're going to use the Petunia Pop in our project today. And the green is uh, Shamrock, something Shamrock. I'll get it eventually. Shy Shamrock. The green is so shy. <laughs> but um, we're going to use the Petunia Pop for today's project. And I'm also going to use some of the In Color Designer Series paper. And I'm going to make this really monochrome. Um, I tend to do that. It's, it's easy and quick. I think I'm going to use this pattern. I like the striped pattern or the floral pattern. Um, so we're going to grab a sheet of that. And um, I will have this on my blog later and try and do a diagram for you, but you're going to need a piece of five and a half by 11. So you won't be able to get two cards out of one sheet of the cardstock because of the fold. Five and a half by 11. And then we're going to score that on both sides at three and three eighths. I'm going to go up to the 3 8 mark and use the scoring blade. And then I'm going to flip it over and do 3 and 3 8 and score that. Um, I love our trimmer because it has the scoring blade and it's, it's right in there. So if you're in the market for a trimmer, you can't beat that. Okay, now we're going to cut this as an, at an angle because this is an angled... Uh, gatefold card. I'm going to go ahead and fold on the score lines just to um, get me so I can see it better. And I'm going to take this score line and line it up in my trimmer blade right here. And then I'm going to take this corner here and this is one and a half on our trimmer. If you don't have that, um, you can mark it, maybe put a little, um, sometimes I use Sharpie on things to mark it. Um, or you can just use a ruler and a, um, um, scissor. And, and do a line, but you want it from this score line, and then you want to line this corner up with the one and a half mark, and we're gonna slice this off real quick. It's so scary. I hope I get it right. And then from this cut, we're gonna line it up and this corner with an inch. And like I said, on my blog, when I get done today, I have a dentist appointment, so it might, it, depending on how much time I have, it might be later today, but I will put a diagram. So from that corner to this corner, we're going to line this corner up with one, one inch, not one and a half. And you can see that's creating that little angled cut. And then we're going to do it on this other side, this corner one and a half. This is our one and a half mark on my trimmer. So I'm going to line this corner up right there at that groove and this fold right in the, um, I call it a gutter. I don't know what you call it, but that's what I call it, right in the gutter. <laughs> and then from this corner to this corner, we're going to line this one up with the one inch mark, which is right here. And that is your card base. Oh, yes, I did that correct. So it's going to fold like that. Did I do that right? I wonder if this is supposed to be 12 inches. No, this should be one inch, five and a half by 11. That's what I did. Did I do my three and three eighths? Yes, it's kind of not working. So what I'm going to do, 
Maybe I did this one wrong. I'm going to trim a little bit of this off. I have my whole diagram and everything right in front of me, y'all. But this is how it goes on live TV. <laughs> now I'm going to trim a little bit of this off. Do do. How did I do that? Just a bit. And see if that works. There we go. Okay, I'm going to redo my measurements when I get off of here and um, figure out what I did wrong. Now I want this one to be exactly the same, so I'm going to cut just a teeny bit off. And see if that works. And a teeny bit off this way. This is what happens <laughs> when you don't do it ahead of time. Correct? I was just going off of the template. There we go. This one is still a little too big. But I want those to be even. Let's start over, y'all. Sorry. Live television. Okay, five and a half by 11. We're going to score it at three and three eighths. One, two, three. I hate that I wasted that paper. But first I need to cut this at five and a half. That might work. I'm wondering if I'm not reading my my template correctly. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn this one over and do three and three eighths. I'm sure that's what I did. We're going to figure this out together. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way this time. On this side, I'm going to go down one and a half, and with my pencil, just to make sure, I'm going to put a little mark right there. And then on this side, I'm going to put a little mark at one inch. So you want to cut from this corner to the one and a half inch mark, and then from this corner to the one inch mark. Let's try that. Let's try it this way and see if it works. I bet I put it in my trimmer incorrectly. I put it way out here. So I probably did not put it right at the one and a half inch mark. Now I'm going to go from this corner to that one inch mark. I was trying to do it the faster way, and that's going to work much better. <laughs> so now again, on this side, we're going to go down one and a half and put a little tick mark. And then on this bottom edge, we're going to put a little tick mark at one inch. Now I know what I did wrong. I didn't line it up at the proper one and a half inch mark on my trimmer. All right, where's my marks? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go from this corner. Uh, no, from this corner, the fold, the fold. We're going to go from the fold to the little tick mark we made at one and a half. And then we're going to go from this cut to that one inch um, tick mark that we made. I don't want 
that to move. Okay, now it's going to fold proper. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we can fold it this way, too. Doesn't matter. Okay, now, for our designer series paper, we need two pieces that measure three by five and a fourth. Actually, three by five. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to use the floral print, I think. It's kind of tropical, don't you think? So there's five, and then I'm going to cut this in half because this is a six by six inch piece of paper. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my ruler, <laughs> and I'm going to go from this corner to the one and a half inch mark. So I'm going to line that up and put a little tick mark at one and a half. And then down here, I'm going to put a tick mark at one inch. And then this is going to scare me, but I am going to put, no, I'm not going to, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to cut it from this corner to the one and a half. I was going to try and stack them, but I put my tick marks on the wrong side. And cut them both at the same time. <laughs> and then from this to our one inch that's right there. I hope this is making sense. Is this making sense to you guys? Hi, Kay! Okay. So this one is going to go right here, and you could make these a little bigger with, um, you could do this 3 8 inch by 5 and a fourth, but I wanted to just use one sheet of my 6 by 6 so I made mine so that it's a little, has a little bigger um, parameter around, and I think it'll still look pretty especially since we're doing the monochromatic. So now on this one, I want to put my tick mark over here at one and a half. I could use my little grid paper here. And then we'll cut that. From this corner to the one and a half. I made it very light so I can't see it. There we go. Because I want this one to go on this panel. And then we're going to cut from this one to the one inch mark here. And I'm just going to mark that um, to the one inch right there. I think that'll work. because this would be the one inch mark, correct? There we go. Whew. Okay, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> it's just paper, right? Ah, Kim says she's gonna need lots of coffee. Maybe that's my problem. Well, I've had two cups. I usually limit myself to two cups, otherwise I get real anxious. So that's how we're gonna do it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to slap a little uh, glue on here. This is our multi-purpose liquid glue that I have put in my favorite um, fine tip glue bottle that I get from Amazon. And I'm going to put that on there so that it looks like we have kind of an even frame around it. I can list my link for the glue bottles. I think you get 12 in a pack. You get way more than you need, but you could share them with friends. I gifted them at Christmas time to my 
at my Christmas party. Um, okay, so that's the card. Whew, I feel like we should um, do have a do-over. I hope I haven't confused everybody. <laughs> All right, and then for the inside, you want your typical piece of basic white, which I thought I had laying right here. Here it is. Do, 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 do. And you just want this to be four by five and a fourth. And that will fit right in the center. And we're going to make a belly band here. And then we're going to embellish it with some of our new products that are coming out. That's what I'm really excited about. A little sloppy there. Like I said, during the month of April, I'm going to try on my Monday... Uh, live streams to do fun folds hopefully they <laughs> won't be as hard as this one i really it's not hard i just cut it wrong <laughs> okay now we're going to make a belly band and i was trying to decide if i wanted my belly band to be the same color or a different color i'm trying to figure out um how it needs to be at least four and a fourth nine or ten inches long so I'm going to just make a I'm going to use the same strip this is what was left over from our cardstock I think I'm going to make it one and a half inch maybe one and three quarter and I'm going to just leave it at 11 oh that's too thick I'm going to make it one and a half You could also use some ribbon to kind of tie it together if you didn't want to do a belly band. I think that'll be nice. Okay. So I'm just going to crease these at the corners and then I'll trim off this extra that I don't need. Now I think I screwed it up because I don't want that fold to show in the front. I had an extra little score mark on there. There we go. I think that'll do it. We'll cover it up with our embellishment. Okay, so I'm going to just trim a little bit off. And then we can crease these. Burnish them real good with our bone folder. Okay. And then I will just put a little bit of my glue right on the edge here. Hold that for a minute. Okay, I'm glad you like it. It's kind of fun, isn't it? It's a little different. And probably if I would have practiced before I um, started, I wouldn't have screwed up on that cutting. But this is live. <laughs> this is how I roll. Okay, there's our belly band. Now, what's really fun is I'm going to embellish it with these new... Um, I. I call them ephemera. I wonder what Stampin' Up! calls them. They're die cuts, really. It's called ephemera. Okay. Um, this is the Fully Flowering Ephemera Pack. And you get all these sheets. I don't know how many sheets. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Looks like you get two of each. So pretty. And then it lists all the colors that are in the the um, the um, die cuts 
so you can coordinate it with your projects, but I really wanted to use this big pink flower um, one. So I'm going to pop that out. These coordinate, I can't show you the inside of the um, catalog yet, but I can show you one thing. Hold on. <laughs> They coordinate with these pre-printed envelopes. And here's two more packs that I'm not using today. Isn't that cute? This is called the Saying Something Ephemera Pack. And this one is the Something for Everything Ephemera Pack. I thought they would be so cute for quick card making and also for some scrapbook pages. But they coordinate with these this is the Sunny Springs cards and envelopes. Um, this is the Calming Creek cards and envelopes. So different colors um, to go with the different um, packs, but I think they all would coordinate together. So anyway, I am gonna pop this little flower on there with some dimensionals. Kind of over the side because I'm going to put a um, little tag right here if it'll if it'll allow me enough room. I wanted to use one of these tags from um, this one might work. Let's see what else we got here. Just to make sure I'm picking something I really like. I think that's going to be the one. These are more basic beige or berry vanilla. I think this one would be cute, but I think it's going to be too long. We could tuck it behind there. My stamp that I'm using is this tiny little happy birthday from the Let's Go Shopping. I'm kind of doing uh, birthday cards this month, so we could probably um, tuck that one back in there. Let's use that one because I kind of like that contrasting green on there. Um, but I'm going to have to stamp my happy birthday way over to the left side. And I'm just going to use some uh, Memento ink. Brand new Memento ink. I'm so happy. <laughs> and I'm going to practice on a scrap just to make sure since once it's on this tag, it's on this tag. Let me do it way over to the left. And it's nice because this is a photopolymer slant stamp, so I can see exactly where it's going. And then I'm going to have to pull this up just a tad. I think I'm going to take it completely off for now. Should have decided on my tag first. And I'm going to put that there. And I think I'll pop it up as well. I can find my dimensionals. I'll use some of these bones here. We'll, get, we'll use these up. I like to give everybody at class a fresh sheet of the dimensionals, or as fresh as I can, and then I end up with a lot of these, and then I try and use these. And then I'm going to just pop that back up, but I think I'm going to have to figure out a different spot. 
for my dimensionals. So I think right over here. And then we'll maybe use a little glue. I don't want it to go on the card. I just want it to go on the belly band. In fact, what I could do, whoops, I don't want them to show either. I was going to just put them on the belly, the belly band. I love this card. I'm excited. Okay, so I'm going to stick that right there, and then I think I'll put a little glue right here to hold that down. There we go. And then I also pulled out some of our new... Um, these are the 2024-2026 In Color Shimmer Gems. These are coming out. When I place my order, I, my pre-order, I always grab all the new In Color stuff. I get the paper, the ink, the markers, and um, when everything opens up for everybody, I will probably order some some more fun things <laughs> like stamp sets and things okay I am gonna just take I think some of these purple ones or maybe the pink ones and just kind of put a few looks like they come in a large and a small size and I think I'll put this one down here I don't know if you can see that I might have should have put the green one on there I wonder how the green would look this is the shy shamrock I think I will and you can actually see them but we're going to save these for another day was gonna see um, yeah. on the label when you order these it tells you what color that they coordinate with and the green in here is garden green granny apple green shy shamrock so we did good so shy shamrocks a good choice I just think you'll be able to see it a little better and I'm gonna save these because I don't want to waste one <laughs> well, let's put a big one on there Here we go. Then you can see that a little better. So there's the card. Now I'll probably add, I, want, I should grab another stamp set and we'll do um, something on the, um, look what I did y'all. I did what I told you not to do. Don't put your dimensional over the, um, we'll just cut that off. There we go. On the inside, let's add a little um, sentiment on the inside. Let me grab I was trying to see if there was something on that one, but I don't really like that one. 
This Charming Sentiment set has so many. And I think I'm going to use that Wishing You Everything Wonderful, which I think I've used, we are using in our, yeah, so I need to, it's one of our cards we're making on in my card class next Thursday. So I need to find that stamp. <laughs> They're right in front of me. I just need to find which box it's in. Hold on. Sorry, I decided to grab the ink pad too. We'll add a little flower on the inside as well. Whoops. Oh, I screwed that up. Okay. While I'm doing this, I'll show you. When you order our stamps sets, probably screwed up the English one. Let me see. Petunia Pop. Here it is. <laughs> you get this little sticker sheet that I cut with my scissors, but I think we can save it. <laughs> Hopefully. There we go. <laughs> it's been a morning, right? Okay. You can just put that little sticker right here the outside of the case so you always know what color it is and then there's another one right here that's just blank or you could use one of the other languages and you can put that one in this little spot so when your ink pad is open you can see what color it is. So isn't that clever what Stampin' Up! has done? And then these things can peel off because our stamp pads are made to stack. There's a little divot and they will kind of fit right into another divot and stack very nicely. All right, I'm gonna do my flower with that one, but I think I'm going to do the um, sentiment just in some memento. I'm going to practice. I always like to practice. Anybody else? Just to make sure I've got it inked up well, since I've already glued my paper down. Okay, and that came out of the Charming Sentiments. I don't know if that one's retiring or not. Let's look. Unfortunately, these are not in alphabetical order. Which I will look later because it would take me a day. I need to probably look it up in the catalog and then I could find it by the page number. Here's the catalog. Let's look. There's a handy dandy index in the back. It's on page 18. So we go to page 18. The Charming Sentiments is retiring. 
I wonder if the dyes, surely the dyes that coordinate with it are retiring as well. The sentiment silhouettes. I really like this stamp set because it has so many of these fun sentiments and then it's got these outline dies that cut them out. We're not going to use that today, but um, I love the, um, the hey there, I say that all the time, faith over fear, I love that. I've used the, I've used the sentiments probably more than the dies, but it's kind of nice to have that die. Okay, I hate it when things retire, but there's some fun things coming up. Okay, I'm going to use this, um, what do we call this? Papa Posey? Petunia Pop. <laughs> and I thought this flower fit so good right here. So isn't that cute? You guys have a lot of spring birthdays coming up. We have a lot of spring birthdays coming up. Spring and summer, so this will be nice to have this. And then we'll slip our belly band right on there. Now I'm gonna list the products I use today. Um, there will not be a link to them because they are um, up and coming. They will be live with the new catalog um, whenever that is. May 1st, I believe. Yes. We were all surprised because usually it's a weird date. It's like May 4th, but it's going to be May 1st this year. So all of these products I've used today, the ink, the embellishments, the ephemera, are all um, in the new catalog. So you got a little sneak peek. But you can try making this card um, with whatever you have. It's called a, um, what did I call it? <laughs> Excuse my arms. An angled trifold card. I call it an angled, um, <clears throat> never mind. I forgot. I don't call it a trifold. I call it a um, something else, but it's an angled. It has three folds. It's a fun fold card. So anyway, I'd love to see what you guys make if you make one. And like I said, go to my blog later. Um, I probably have time. To actually, no, I have to go to the dentist. But later on today, I will have the diagram and everything um, that might be a little bit more clear than my instructions earlier. Um, so thanks for joining me this morning. You all have a great, hey Betty Holton, uh, just got here. We'll have to watch the replay, but the card is beautiful. Thank you. Um, I made some mistakes in, at the beginning, buddy. So fast forward, use your ruler, use the ruler method instead of the um, paper trimmer method. It works much better. At least it worked much better for me. So just a tip. All right, you guys, um, don't forget about the, if you're in the Kansas City area, oh my gosh, sorry, um, just sign up for my card class a week from Thursday. We're making some fun folds here. And we're also making a little, I just kind of threw this in for fun, the little gift card holder. A customer said she'd love to learn how to make one. So we're going to make that one. It's going to be real quick and easy just to put a gift card in. The theme is kind of April showers and birthday cards. But like I said, you can change up your sentiments um, to fit your needs. And then um, I hope you try the angled um, trifold card. And we will see you next Monday. Have a great week and um, happy stamping, y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>